So we're going to talk a little bit about fearful and shy dogs right now. Um, I think this is probably the most common behavior problem that we, in our, that we get in, in, in my business anyways when it comes to uh, dogs coming from rescue is we get dogs that are nervous, um, dogs that have had, had maybe some, some trauma in the past and, and they're not quite sure how to deal with it. And uh, for me, one of the, the worst mistakes that people make is they coddle that behavior. And, uh, you know, I get it. Like, I, my heart goes out to these dogs, especially when you see a really nervous dog. You know, that's why they show us these videos on TV trying to get you to donate to certain animal shelters of these, you know, dogs sitting in the back of a kennel with their big eyes and they're shaking and they're nervous. It, it pulls at our heartstrings. But when we bring one of these dogs into our home, it's important to remember that we're trying to help that dog have a better life. We're trying to help that dog grow inside and, and become a confident, happy dog in the world. So we want to be careful about coddling that behavior. It doesn't mean that we need to throw the dog into the deep end of the pool and hope he swims. It means that we need to uh, give the dog some time. We need to condition the dog's behavior and, and, and help the dog deal with the real world. So. For me personally, uh, food is, is the easiest way to a dog's heart. Um, we can control the dog's diet. We can tell the dog you're getting fed every morning at seven o'clock in the morning. You're getting fed every night at six o'clock at night or whatever your schedule might be. And we get the dogs on these feeding schedules and then ideally, so let's say seven o'clock is feeding time. Well, I don't feed the dog breakfast and I take the dog out to the park and I offer the dog some treats and ideally the dog wants to work for me. He goes like, I'm hungry, it's feeding time. We don't have to starve the dog. We don't have to have the dog hungry for days and days and days and days, but we want the dog motivated. We don't want to take the dog out as soon as he eats breakfast and then decide we're going to go offer him food. Um, the dog's got to have this battle inside of him where he says like, you know, I'm nervous, but do I choose to be nervous or do I choose to eat food right now? So we want the dog to be, to to be at a point where he does want food. So for me personally, it's, you know, if I feed my dog at seven o'clock in the morning, um, I'm gonna skip that seven o'clock morning meal and I'm gonna take the dog out to do some training. And when we get done with training, we can come back home and he can eat a seven o'clock meal at 8.30 or whatever time it is. But I wanna take the dog out and I just wanna get some training done with the dog. I want the dog to be comfortable. And, and for a lot of times with the fearful dogs, we really have to be careful about uh, the the level that we ask from them, you know, we don't want to ask too much too soon. And a lot of times, if I have a dog that has um, <clears throat> that is a bit nervous, and I take the dog out into the park, and he knows how to sit and down at home, I'm not going to ask him to sit and down at home. I'm just going to feed him some treats. I might call his name. I might ask him to come. I'm not going to ask him for anything too too hard. I don't want him to to have this big task that he has to has to battle with. I just want to say, hey, buddy, you and I are at the park. Like, there's a lot of things going around that that make you a little bit nervous, but I'm going to feed you here. We're going to sit here and we're going to play around with that. And I just want to, you know, I, I can use food a lot of times just to condition the dog's behavior to where he goes like, hey, like I hear, you know, there's, there's some crazy things going on, but JJ's got food. So I'm not going to worry about those crazy things. I'm going to hang out and eat some food with JJ. And we can sit here and we can create this um, nice little uh, uh, back and forth with the dog where I can say, hey, come here, I'm going to feed you. And the dog goes, oh, but there's kids over here. Oh, come here, I'm going to feed you. And we can use that food a lot to help the dog kind of get through their, uh, their fear. And eventually the dog comes out to a place, to an environment, to whatever it's nervous about. And it says like, I'm not so weird about this stuff because I know these are the scenarios that good things happen. I get fed in, life is great. Um, we want to make sure that we're not putting too much social pressure on the dog. So for me, um, if I have a nervous dog, the very first thing that I want to do when I get out into public with him is I want to make sure that he wants to engage with me um, or the food. And I say like, let's go outside. Um, let's see if you'll eat. And if I have a dog that it will readily eat, okay, let's take it to the next step. Now I'm going to see if you'll sit. If you'll sit, I'm going to do several sits in a row. Sit, yes, feed. Sit, yes, feed. Sit, yes, feed. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to work with the dog in this environment and make sure that he's, he's comfortable working in that environment and he's, and he's good. But if he's not ready for that, I'm not going to put that on him. So if I have a dog that's kind of interested in food and I say sit and he won't sit and he's just too shut down, that's okay. I'm going to let him back off a little bit and that's all we're going to do. Let's go out into the park. Let's have some free treats. Every time you see a bicycle, you're going to get fed. Every time you see uh, somebody walking by, you're going to get fed. And, and we just kind of build up his confidence in that, in that area. And then once we have that, so we've gone out to the park several days in a row and he can see that kind of stuff and he's over it and he knows that, that you know, nothing's going to come out of the sky and catch him or anything like that. Now we have uh, um, a little bit more confidence in the dog. Now maybe we can push him a little bit. Now I ask him to sit. Now he's got to sit before he gets a piece of food. And I can just sit here and I can work with the dog in that environment and let everything uh, um, 
you know, get comfortable to where the dog goes like, okay, I can perform these tasks, I can be out in this environment, good things happen to me, there's nothing to be, to be worried about. And, uh, and that's typically, generally speaking, um, where we start with a lot of uh, nervous and fearful dogs. And kind of going back to some of the obedience stuff in this is, I think you have a couple of different ways to deal with things when we have a nervous dog. You know, the, the, the wrong way is to um, sit here and coddle that behavior because we're basically kind of telling the dog things are okay. Like we're saying like, oh, you want to cower in the corner? You want to you crawl up into a little ball? That's okay. What I want to do is I just want to give that op dog the opportunity to kind of come out of its shell and say like, okay, everything's okay. Like I went out into this environment and even if it's only for two or three minutes, something very short, we want to say, look, pup, it's okay. Like you can come out here, nothing bad's gonna happen and you can we can go away we can go back home um, I had a dog that I adopted from uh, the Humane Society years ago um, before I got into dog training and that was one of the, the exercises that really helped us a lot because he was pretty nervous about being into new environments and um, it got to the, you know he was at the point where he wouldn't take food when we walked out into a new environment um, he just shut down completely and so <clears throat> for me it was taking him out into a new environment walking him around for about a minute and a half and then putting him away and we would go home. So back in that day, there was, you know, video stores. So when we would go rent a video, I would take him to the video store. I would pull him out of the car. I would walk him around in the parking lot. I'd put him back in. I'd go check out my video. I'd pull him back out of the car. I'd walk him around. I'd put him back in. I'd go to the gas station. I'd pull him out of the car. I'd walk him around. I'd put him back in. It was just these short set sections. And it, you know, it took a while. It took, took a, a couple of months for him to get to that point where we can go out into these environments and he was comfortable enough to where he would take food. And then it took a little more time to where he would go out into these environments and then he would perform a task for food. So I'd say, let's go outside, sit, okay, you get fed, and then we go back inside. Over time, it just really helped him overcome those fears and he became a, a very you know, happy, well-adjusted dog. But it, you know, these things can take some time. And the biggest thing is, we wanna be careful about putting too much social pressure. So if I have a dog that's nervous, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people make is uh, to have a bunch of strangers feed the dog. We think that's, um, that's a, a good way to make the dog comfortable with other people. Hey, everybody's gonna have food. But now we're taking this fearful dog and uh, we're sending them out to, to, to new people. And you know, let's face it, uh, people don't always behave the way they should behave when it comes to training a dog. And you know, the dog comes over and they start feeding the dog and then they get comfortable and they say, ah, I'm gonna pet you and freak the dog out. Now we just took a big step back in training. The other thing is if I have a fearful dog and everybody's been feeding that dog, at some point we're gonna go out into public and he's gonna approach somebody and they're not gonna have food and then he's gonna be in a situation that he's really uncomfortable in and that can result into some, some bad, bad things happening. So for me personally, I wanna build the dog's confidence with their owner. Like I want the, the person to go out there with their dog and say, hey, everything's okay. It's you and me, pal. I'm gonna feed you treats. When somebody approaches us, good things are gonna happen. They're gonna happen for me. You don't have to worry about this world you just have to stay focused with me and you know at that point too us as the owners have to take on that responsibility of now it's your job to make sure nothing bad happens to your dog I don't want to be hanging out with my dog telling him life is wonderful giving him some treats and have some random dog run up on him and cause a problem or some random person come over and try to overstep their bounds and and pet on him or anything like that um, it's my job to keep those things away from him now so when we go out into the world um, I want to create this relationship with my dog where, hey buddy, it's you and me, we're gonna go out here, you're gonna see people approach us, but good things are gonna happen, they're gonna happen for me. And that can really help bring the dog's confidence level way up to where the dog gets more and more comfortable. He starts to have his place, he starts to understand what he's supposed to be doing out there. He doesn't have to make, I teach dog training, I go out in front of people all the time and I talk to these big groups and I work one-on-one -on -one pe with people, but personally, like I don't, feel like I'm that social of a guy. So I kind of relate to the dogs when it's like, you know, I want my own space. I want to be my own thing. I don't walk through the park and wave hi at everybody. And I think a lot of dogs kind of feel that same way where it's like, you know, they just want to be themselves. And I can totally relate to the dogs when it's like, let's go out to the park. You don't have to go up and, and wag your tail to everybody and, and kiss on everybody. Uh, we're just going to go out here. You and I are going to hang out. We're going to have some treats. We're going to have a good time. And then we're going to go away. And eventually the dog gets to that point where 
where they feel confident and comfortable going out into these new environments. They don't feel the social pressure of having to perform in front of all these other strangers or anything like that. And uh, um, you know, I think this is kind of the best way to make those dogs a little more solid around uh, people and strangers and new environments and, and new things. Thank you.